If you need a new launcher, you've come to the right video because I'll be showing off the best Android launchers of 2021. Some of them are feature packed, others are minimal, the majority are free, and some of them deserve a lot more publicity. By showing off nine selections, you'll definitely find a launcher that suits you well, so a huge thumbs up for that. Also be sure to check out my second channel called How To Men In Español to watch all my videos in Spanish. The link is in the description. Anyway, the first launcher on the list is Ruthless Launcher. It's the most minimal option that replicates the Pixel Launcher and adds some additional home screen features. First off, the launcher is very fluid, loading apps quickly, scrolling through the app drawer or home pages is very seamless, and searching for apps is a breeze. The settings could use a bit of work. It feels like the menus and switches are thrown all over the place without any proper categorization, but other than that, it's still somewhat customizable. You have icon pack support, the option to change the font, animation, grid size, lock apps with a biometric unlocking method, hide apps, and be able to bring them back using a keyword within the app drawer. The option to add the Google News Feed Panel on the home screen, you'll just need to download an extra APK to enable it. I'll include the download link right below the like button and a lot more small customizations. Sure, there are other more powerful options out there such as Hyperion Launcher, but this still gets the job done. The download size isn't that big, it's completely free with no in-app purchases and the developers are extremely active. The next launcher on this list isn't even a launcher, but it's still an app that allows you to create a unique home screen setup that makes it look like you've installed a third party launcher. I'm talking about the KLWP Live Wallpaper Maker. There are plenty of apps out there that use this so you can apply a sick setup with animations, unique looking designs and widgets. I recommend using it on Nova Launcher, but once you set the KLWP as your live wallpaper, you can download a KLWP pack from the Play Store, such as New Cards or Lucid for KLWP Pro. And from there, you can apply a cool looking home screen setup from those apps. Plus, it's crazy how a lot of them look like an actual launcher. You can tap on buttons to slide in new cards or pages. The animations are always very mesmerizing and some of them even allow you to customize the setup from the home screen. It's crazy because you're doing all this on one home screen page. If you like help finding some unique KLWP packs, make sure to use an app called Bitlet to find the newest and most active ones. Also make sure to have the KLWP Live Wallpaper Pro key installed as well, otherwise you won't be able to apply those third party packs. Hyperion Launcher is the third best option and it's been my go-to for the longest. It's very similar to Ruthless Launcher, but it has a lot more features and is a bit more mature. Not only can you customize the crap out of the home screen, but it also has custom font support. You can customize the color of any object, including the search bar. Google Calendar, Widget, Folders, etc. And here's a cool trick, you can enable two rows of apps in that dock and enable multiple dock pages to have a staggering amount of apps in the dock. And of course, you still got the classical pixel launcher options such as the Google Discover panel, slide of app drawer, and, and the undo option when you remove something from your home screen. The only complaint that I have is that you can't add blank pages on the home screen and it's not as customizable as Nova Launcher. I made a video comparing Hyperion with Nova Launcher, so if you want to check that out, click that eye in the top right corner. Overall, it's still a very powerful launcher that works amazingly. It's just a small step behind Nova Launcher. Ratio is just one of those launchers that helps you use your phone less by creating fewer distractions on the home screen. It keeps everything black and white while adding a few hints of yellow to guide your attention. It's completely different from your usual swipe up app drawer home screen. Instead, there are three pages, one for your widgets, another for your apps, and a final screen for your messages. On the widgets page, you can place the weather, music player, calendar, timer, etc. with most of the cards being expandable. For your apps, they're automatically organized into categories so that you can find them quickly, and it has a handy feature where each section in an app will show you the usage time. Long pressing an app will give you a more detailed overview, and you can also mark the icon, mute its notifications, lock it, and a lot more. Finally, the third screen to the right combines all of your conversations from Instagram, WhatsApp, Telegram, and Facebook, so you can respond to your newest messages much more quickly. Depending on how much spam you receive though from each social app, this could be a hit or miss feature. Overall, it still gets the job done of having my phone distract me less without just eliminating everything off the home screen. If you do want something a lot more minimal, check out Before Launcher. But before I show off that launcher, I just wanted to give a shout out to channel sponsor Dbrand. I've been saying it for a really long time. You can't go wrong with the skins they sell. They're top quality, have plenty of textures to choose from, support a ton of different devices, including things that aren't phones, and using a skin gives each device a bit more grip while also getting rid of those fingerprint smudges. 
My personal favorites are the pastel skins because no matter the color, they make the phone look a lot brighter and exciting. For those who prefer the extra protection, they also sell grip cases. They're heavy duty, extremely grippy, and you can still slap a skin on the back of it for customization. So if you'd like to make your phone or gadgets a bit more personal, go to dbrand.com slash howtomen. That's dbrand.com slash howtomen. Anyways, back to before launcher, this is the simplest launcher you can install. It only comes with three pages. The main screen just has all of your most used apps. The screen to the right has all of your apps in a list format. It also has app suggestions at the very top and the leftmost screen filters your notifications. That way you can only get notified when you receive an important notification, such as a text message or email, instead of a less important one, such as a game notification. That's pretty much the entire launcher. Oh, and you can change the background or icons, but that's about it. So if you want the ultimate launcher that gets rid of distraction, download before launcher. If you're looking for something a bit more robust and organized, check out Smart Launcher 5. It's very similar to the traditional Android launcher, but the twist here is that the app drawer categorizes your apps into sections. Swiping between each page lets you switch to a different category of apps, and on the home screen, you have a handful of your favorite icons, the clock, and the weather. The search bar is also universal, so you can search for apps, contacts, and the web. Swiping to the right includes a page where you can place your widgets, and the leftmost screen provides you with the news. That's really it. You can't really customize much, but it's designed to be used with one hand, and I think they nailed it. Switching things up a bit, Square Home takes it to a whole other level by making your home screen look like a Windows phone. No two home screens will ever look alike since the tiles can be moved around, resized, customized, and contain various things. I have tiles for the clock, a live photos tile that scrolls through my pictures, some live tiles to see the RAM, battery, and storage capacity. I can have folders filled with tons of apps, a cube that lets me find the right social app, and some tiles that hold widgets. The more tiles you add, the longer the page will get, or you can add multiple pages to the side. And honestly, I love having some of the tiles always animate because it keeps the home screen looking alive and well. If you jump into the settings, you will also be able to customize a lot more, such as the icon pack, the background, the overall size of the tiles, and a lot more. The only thing to keep in mind is that you'll only be able to use some of the features for 14 days before needing to pay to unlock them all again. Still, give it a shot if you want something refreshing. Microsoft hasn't done a lot of things right, but their launcher isn't one of them. This is a very functional and extremely fluid launcher. It provides no lag at all and gives me some useful information when I need it. The leftmost shelf screen is what really catches my attention since it gives me what the Bixby panel never could. My calendar events, tasks, sticky notes, most frequently used apps, documents, screen time, and recent activities. Sure, they have their own little advertisement at the bottom, but I've seen some companies do a lot worse, <laughs> Samsung. And in that same panel, you can tap on the news tab to catch up on your daily news. Another reason why I love this launcher is that it can apply some really nice high quality backgrounds. They're all photographs of the earth. And just by tapping on a shortcut, I can switch to a different one easily. There's also a hidden trick where if I swipe up on the dock, it'll expand it and reveal more apps. The search bar is also universal. And within the settings, you can modify a lot more. I don't really have anything bad to say about this launcher. Microsoft really nailed this one. Last but not least, let's talk about the well in the room, Nova Launcher. It's the most popular and well-rated launcher on the Play Store. It's also one of the oldest launchers around and the developers have managed to still keep it up to date with the latest Android features. Most people who extremely customize their home screen always use Nova since it allows them to modify everything. You can increase the grid size to an insane amount Remove everything from the home screen, including the status bar, and you can create blank pages, which for some reason, a lot of launchers can't do. And no matter how you modify your home screen, the launcher is still extremely fluid and loads up everything quickly. If you don't like any of the launchers that are recommended, you can at least fall back to the classic. Either way, that's been the best Android launchers of 2021. I'm sorry for not mentioning Launcher 2, but recently the developers have stopped development for it and there will be no more updates for it. So I didn't want to recommend a launcher that would just become outdated. Anyways, thank you for sticking around. Please get subscribed while you're at it with the notification bell turned on. Only a few percentage of you guys are subscribed. We push out awesome Android videos like this every week. Don't forget to check out those awesome dbrand skins. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!